Hi everybody, Brian Strasser, Principal and Chief Executive here at Bright Path, and welcome to episode 223 of the Managing Uncertainty podcast here at Bright Path. I'm often asked, what is resilience? And how do I explain resilience to the leaders in my organization? So the International Standards Organization, or ISO, has a definition for resilience. It describes it as the ability of an organization to absorb and adapt in a changing environment to enable it to continue to deliver its objectives and to survive and prosper. And I can't really think of a better definition of resilience, but where I think we get lost on resilience, particularly in large complex organizations, is that there's more to read about that are between the lines. Here at Bright Path, we think about resilience as a group of capabilities inside of an organization. They support your ability to solve big problems, to continue your operations, to protect your assets, and most importantly, protect your people. On a practical level, we achieve this through basic blocking and tackling. You implement certain key components of a resilience program in a logical way to prevent, to plan for, to respond to, and recover from situations that cause disruption to your organization. And those core components are made up of a number of things. They're the things you might expect to hear us talk about at an organization like Bright Path, where we are resilience consultants. And those are business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications. But there's more. When we talk about business continuity, we're talking about the understanding of your organization's critical capabilities, your critical processes and functions, the dependencies these processes have on technology, on facilities, on people, on third-party service providers, and other key resources. And then the plans to deal with the disruption of those and an understanding of what the impact is when you can't do that critical work. Crisis management, of course, is the ability to manage a disruption. It's the ability to harness the resources from across your organization and bring them together in a structured manner to collaborate, to make the decisions necessary to protect the organization, to get back up and running, to take care and protect your team, and then to learn from those situations so that next time around, you get to make new original mistakes. And then crisis communications is the ability to communicate within that crisis, both operationally, how do we communicate the decisions we've made from a crisis management uh, standpoint through your crisis management processes, but also how do you deal with the reputational aspects of a crisis, internal communications, external communications, investor communications, social media, and all the aspects of that kind of sphere of communications that you need to do. But there's more to this, of course. There's disaster recovery, or what you might refer to as technology recovery. It's the ability to plan for your critical technologies and the infrastructure that supports them, be able to recover those in the event of a disruption, and make sure that you've engineered the right high, high availability strategies to keep that technology up and running. It's enterprise risk management. It's understanding the core risks and threats that your organization is faced with and ensuring that you have adequate plans around those risks. It's information security or cybersecurity. It's protecting your critical technologies from a security standpoint. It's about using good security practices as you're building and implementing technologies, and it's about dealing with cybersecurity incidents. It's also the basic blocking and tackling of protecting your team. So it's your life safety and emergency procedures, evacuation, first aid, active shooter, sheltering in place, fire, flood, hurricanes. It's all those basic life safety plans that we need to have in place. And then of course, going back to my roots, it's the physical security or what you might refer to as the global security or corporate security aspects of resilience. And that includes travel, safety and security, intelligence, workplace violence prevention and threat management, or maybe even a global security operations center. All of these components are building blocks of resiliency. None of them stand separate and alone. What's important here is the cross-organizational coordination of those components. We want them to work together. They're probably reporting in different parts of your organization and that creates challenges, but you need to find a way where there is good coordination laterally, cutting across the silos in your organization. And if you put those things together, 
if you put good governance measures together and good collaborative measures in place along all of these different aspects of resiliency, then, my friends, you have a resilience program that you can be proud of and one that will make sure that your organization can withstand the kinds of disruptions that we expect to see for years to come. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty podcast. I'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.